In the first video of this lesson, we discussed how to define stock automatically. When stock is defined automatically, material is added around the part by a given offset value. The drawback to this method is the overall dimensions of the stock don't always add up as common material dimensions because they're determined by the part dimensions plus the offset value. Remember, most rough stock is coming from plate that's a standard thickness, or from bar stock that is a common material thickness and width, and then rough cut before being machined. So in this video, we're going to discuss methods of gaining more control over the stock definition process. If you plan on following along, open part 4.3 and save a copy of it in your working directory. At the bottom of the SolidWorks feature tree, you should notice that I've already created three sketches that we're going to use to define the stock of our part in various ways. In the first method, we're going to use the rectangular sketch. When you select it, you'll notice that I was able to define the overall width and overall length of the stock using nominal dimensions. Now, let's switch over to our CAM manager, right-click the job, and select Edit. We're going to change the stock definition from automatic to from extruded sketch. We need to expand our feature tree and select that rectangular sketch. So now instead of defining the stock based on an offset value, we're defining it based on the precise sketch. The top controls how far the stock is going to start above the part. Let's enter 40 thousandths of an inch. Next, we can define the overall thickness of our part. In this case, we're going to enter 1 inch. Now we have a rough block of stock that we know is 5 inches by 3.5 inches by 1 inch thick. But what if we are going to water jet cut our rough blanks from plate stock as shown in the diagram? Well, I already created an irregular sketch that could demonstrate this. Let's remove the rectangular sketch by selecting it and pressing delete and then select the irregular sketch. Now we can start seeing that defining the stock with a sketch has more advantages than just giving more control over the exterior dimensions. We can also control the shape of the stock. With the stock defined, let's go ahead and press OK to accept the current job setup. I want to take stock definition a step further. What if we were going to create this part from a forging or cast rough block? How would that be handled? Because there's more to the geometry than just a profile. Well, we can actually define our stock using a solid body. To demonstrate this, let's go back to the SolidWorks feature tree and select our irregular sketch. Now, on the Features tab of the Command Manager, create a Boss Extrude. To keep things similar to how the Boss Extrude was created using the Sketch method, I'm going to change the From tab to Offset and force the sketch to start 40 thousandths of an inch above the top of the part. We're then going to set the overall thickness of our stock to 1 inch. And we may need to flip the direction to ensure that our part is inside of the stock. Now here's the trick. It's important that we unselect Merge Result. If Merge Result was selected, the extrude would act like any other extrude does and merge the part we want to machine with this new stock geometry. With merge result unselected, when I select OK, we now have two solid bodies on our feature tree. Currently, this solid body is the same as the stock was before. But the advantage to using a solid body is we can create cuts on that solid body. So select solid body cut and select cut extrude. When you have multiple solid bodies in one part, we can now define the feature scope. We don't want to cut through all of the solid bodies. 
Instead, we just want to cut through the solid body that's defining our stock. So this cut is not going to cut into the part, just the solid body defining the stock. For the end condition, we're going to use offset from surface, zoom in, right click and select select other. Now we want to select the top face of our finished machined part and offset away from that face 40 thousandths of an inch. Make sure the offset is above the face and then set a direction to that goes through everything to make sure it chops up through the top of the part. I can select OK and we can see now we're starting to form what could be custom stock material. A quick little tip here though is it's always nice to make the stock translucent. So select the solid body defining the stock, select appearances, and we want to change the appearances of just the body. I'm going to set my color to yellow and under advanced options I can select illumination. Now we'll just drag over the transparency amount and select OK. For the purposes of demonstration I'm not going to go through the process of creating all the features because now you understand how you can make cuts just cut a given solid body. Instead, let's move back to our CAM Manager tree, edit the job, and under Stock Definition, define it from a solid. We can select the solid in the Graphics area or on the Feature tree. I'll select OK. So now we can see we have ultimate control over how the stock is defined using solid bodies. An additional advantage to using a solid body is even if the job is not selected, we can still see our stock material because it's a solid body. If we want to hide that solid body, simply go to the SolidWorks feature tree, right click it on the feature tree and select hide. Well, I hope now I've given you the tools you need to be able to create stock for milled parts.